Hello, Ed Billings. How are you? I am doing great. And hello, everybody. It's time for our next episode of Messy in the Middle, where we believe you get as messy and we believe you can have a balanced life and a thriving business. And that's what yes. we're trying to walk through here. Yeah, so this, exactly. this episode is all about surplus. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're not talking supply chain issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're talking about real estate and how you take care of your clients. And uh, yeah. we're going to walk you through that. So Jeffy, why don't yeah. you talk a little bit about what we're what we're talking about here? Sure. So we're going to hit three main points today. Um, number one is surplus and, and what that means. Identifying when you're in surplus and hiring for your surplus. So I just want to do a shout out to my coach at Buffini, Julie. Um, she and my other coach, uh, Billy Van Raphorst talked to me a lot about surplus over the last few years. And I was always afraid of what would happen if I did all my calls and I, I followed up with people and kept in touch and did my parties and whatever. And I didn't know what I would do with that when I got it. And um, obviously life in real estate right now is surplus. There's just so much going on, but also on a deeper level, a lot of my relationship clients are coming and saying, it's time to buy, it's time to sell, it's time to do whatever. And I only have one head and two hands. And so it's been a lot. So we're just going to kind of, we're going to go through that really quick. So you want to start with surplus? Yeah, let's do it. So okay. um, so surplus, I think we definitely in our business are in a season of surplus. Yep. There's more yeah, business exactly. out there um, and we're seeing it on the listing side. I know on the buyer side. So I know last week we both had new listings we put on, yep. um, and I think this is a great example of what surplus is. So t- talk sure. about your listing and the activity, and I'll talk okay. about mine. Sure. So number one, uh, two listings hit both in my little area of La Mesa, San Diego, and um, one was listed at a very reasonable price, not underlisted, but very a good price. I thought maybe we'd get 25000 over. We had 300 showings in two and a half days and it was so bonkers. And you can imagine that as an agent and especially an agent like you and I are where we really want to be good to our word and get back to people. I had over 150 texts within 24 hours. So trying to keep that straight and get back to people and be kind and sensitive to the fact that they're out there busting their butts, trying to make things happen for their buyers, you know, that's too much. That's surplus. And and granted, like you said, I'm sorry to cut you off, but like you said, we are in a season. And so we might not be like that next week. We might not be like that when interest rates go up, but to keep a reputation as an agent that I really, really want, I want people to know when I write an offer on their property or they write one on one of my listings, I'm a girl of my word. I'm going to get back to you. I'm going to be kind. I'm going to give you the information you need. I'm, you know, just to create that string of events to be a good person. And it's different. Yeah. I'm facing the same thing on mine and not to the same level, I think. Mm-hmm. But um, let me ask you that. Were you able to return all those texts and calls? I did. Oh, I you! Did. I hate you because I haven't done that yet. And I'm so yeah. angry at myself. So I'll tell you how I did it really quick, just so that people know. I made a list in the notes section of my phone with every question that someone would ask, because most of the time people ask like five main questions. Mm -hmm. And then at the top, I said, due to the volume of calls, I have made a cheat sheet. Please read through and see if your question's answered. And I just copied and pasted that all day long. And then I also wrote, due to the volume of texts, I'm so sorry, I cannot make individual calls. Please send your highest and best offer. But there was never just dead air. Yeah, that's, that's really good. I did that on the front end of mine where I'm struggling now is everybody wants the after action report, like how they did. Yeah. And I'm like, so backing up uh, a hot, uh, you know, similar hot listing situation. And we were rushing because we had a snowstorm coming in. Now you don't have that problem in San Diego, (laughs) San Diego. Again, I'm in North Carolina. We don't get that much snow, but when we do, Everybody freaks out. It's like the end of the world. And yeah. so we saw this storm coming and I'm like, I got to get this listing out. It was, the timing was really important for the seller. So we dumped it on the market, um, 
two days before the storm, 90 showings in that period of time, no overlap. Um, again, it was a rural property, really neat piece of property, mm-hmm. long gravel road. It wasn't going to work to have everybody just show up. There'd be a jam sure. and we were worried about snow. Somebody got stuck in the mud at six o'clock at <laughs> night, had to be towed out. It was just like, yeah. it was a nightmare. And and we had 26 offers, mm-hmm. you know, and complicated property. So everybody's asking these questions about the railroad tracks and the, you know, yeah. this and that and the other septic tank, all this stuff. And, you know, trying to be consistent and follow up. Mm-hmm. We did a really good job with that, but now I'm struggling with the after action. And I, right. I realize I'm going to just have to bite the bullet one of these evenings and just call everybody after it's settled sure. down and, and have sure. that conversation. And we can even talk about that, the after action under the hire, because I have an idea for you that we use on our team. And um, actually here, I'm just going to tell you what it is right now so that we don't, we can keep okay. it succinct. Yeah. But yeah. at the end of our, when we, when the seller has chosen their, you know, their, their buyer and their backup buyer, possibly a second backup buyer too, we send a letter out to everybody thanking them for their offer and saying, highlighting why their offer wasn't chosen. So it's all in one big CC'd email. So this, the one I was telling you about had over 30 offers. I don't even know the number at this point, but that's what we do. And then that stops the, at least they know. And I would want to know too, were we off by a thousand dollars? Did we, our terms wrong? So it's just, it's a learning experience and I don't get too detailed, but it's just, it's a great way to kind of go, okay, here you go. Here's the reason why we chose the top offer and then let them take that information. Yeah, that's really good to put put the because you've got it in the spreadsheet, right? So yeah. you just say these no. were, you know, this is why where you fell short on these categories. Sure. Boom, boom, boom. And, you and if you're in the top three, you can let them know if they were in the top three. Sure. And I call those people. I usually call the top five people because I know how hard yeah. they've been working. Not that all of them yeah. haven't been working hard, but you, you get what I'm saying. But yeah. you don't have to be that specific, Ed. You can you can just say the winning offer had super short time frames. They got rid of this, these contingencies, they released their deposit, they blah, blah, blah. And then they can know. And just let it be. Yeah. Yeah. So um, can I pull us ahead. back to surplus for a second? Okay. Please do. So, yeah, please do. Yeah. So just before we move on to, let's talk about actually identifying it because I think everybody understands at this point what surplus looks like. So you identified it through not being able to call all your showings back. Is that what you're, how you were feeling or? Yeah, I I identify in this case on the listing side, it's like I have my standards of communication I like to hold. Mm -hmm. And I realized I was unable to do that. And and then also like I need to rework systems like I'm getting too many notifications from showing time. I've got to turn all that off for the next. I know my next listing I'm bringing on is going to have the same issue. So I've got to I've got to like see where this ball's going. Right. And and make sure that I don't get clogged up and, mm-hmm. and then do a better job on the FAQ yeah. so that you've got that kind of pre-built and, yep. uh, and ready to go. Um, and then add to it as the inquiries come in. Yeah. But yeah, it was that not, not meeting my standard to where gotcha. it's like, I can't keep up. I'm drowning in this. Right. Um, I need, this is, I just can't, I just can't do it. I can't do it. Yeah. And for me, and I've been taking a lot of notes on this because Ed and I have been talking about identifying where I personally as an agent need help right now. So I've noticed that, um, you know, not getting back to people in a timely manner, which is frustrating for them and also frustrating for me because then, you know, there's a lot of back and forth about, I'll be in touch with you. Please just give me 10 minutes or give me, I'm on a call or whatever. And it needs to be a little bit more succinct and it also doesn't need to be me that's doing it. So there's that piece. Um, admin stuff, just uh, the basic paperwork things, getting my eyes on stuff. So there's no mistakes made. Our system was really botched this last weekend through our, um, our offer writing system, which, um, uh, why am I drawing a blank on the name of it right now? <laughs> Because that's a sign of surplus. <laughs> Wind forms, that's what it's called. So, um, you know, going through and just making sure there's no mistakes because it, po- it was populating names it shouldn't. And it's just stupid little mistakes were happening, which I don't I don't like that. So 
I've noticed that in surplus. Also, um, being exhausted, needing a day off, and then being resentful that I have the business that I have, which is ridiculous because this is, you know, this is what I've been working toward. And so to have something exciting and resentful at the same time is, is not a good deal. <laughs> right. So right. that's kind of how I started really identifying that I, I need some help. Yep. Okay. So you need some help. So you, yeah. we've talked about what it is and then yeah. how to recognize it. Sure. So now what do you do? Right. So this is where you hire. And yeah. we want to share with everybody who's listening to this. This is, you know, we're, this is a work in progress right now. So we're still figuring this out and we would love your input. And, you know, we'll do another podcast once we actually do a hundred percent figure it out. But Ed, can you talk about hiring your, your buyer's agent and kind of, so you, you had a surplus, you identified the problem and then you hired for it. And now where are you? Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so last fall, well, actually, this really kicked off when right after Jeffy and I met in May. Yeah, because I, I had my assistant, and I'm like, I need to have a buyer's agent. I see where this is going, mm -hmm. and Jeffy helped me tremendously on that. And we, I developed a, a very detailed hiring profile, yes. and I used Indeed. And I think the key in this, I've been thinking about it for this next hire, very detailed. Right. Very specific about what you want and what you need and what they need to bring to the table and what they yep. get out of it. Yeah. And it's kind of like what, you know, it's like showing a home. It's a process of elimination, right? You're trying to eliminate as many eyeballs that don't fit. So you're looking for those few people that pick that up and say, oh my gosh, this is perfect. Mm -hmm. You're still going to get a lot of junk. Yeah, But the more specific you are, and I was thinking about this with Indeed, like you can do qualifying questions in there. So right. if it's like, you know, this is a part-time job only, you know, this is not a career path, a position that you're going to go full-time. You can qualify that out. Or you right. must, well, here's one, like you've got to be a licensed agent. Even though you right. say it, people will still throw it out. So you need, you can have, have the specific question that they have to, pay attention to answer. Yeah. Cause and you're trying to get to... less resumes more than rather Correct. than more. So indeed is a hiring site, right? Yeah. Because, um, you shared that with me to everybody that's listening probably knows that already, but for people like me who didn't know what that was, <laughs> you know, mm, you'd indeed. be surprised. Okay. But yeah, but we just we have get to, really you know, is. yeah. Just gotta we, let them know. Yeah, you're right. Okay. So super detailed. So I would say the, best thing that I did with Ed for figuring out the detailed list was I sat down at the end of every day last week and wrote down where could I have delegated? That's really where good. did I need, where did I need help? So that, because when you try to shove everything into that one day, we're like, I need this and I need that. You don't even know what you need until you need it. But, um, one of the big things that came up is that I need help on holidays and weekends because my beautiful assistant Raquel needs a day off and she has a family and I want her to work with me forever. So, you know, she has time off and I don't bother her on the weekends usually. Huh. Um, <laughs> we'll so, talk, we'll get her on here to see. How yeah, exactly. That is. We'll see what she says. But, um, yeah, the, the thing is, is I need somebody that is 100% committed to me Saturday, Sunday, and week and holidays, which are usually on a Friday or a Monday. And so then I was like, okay, what would those people do? And then I started making my list of things they would do. And then the next need I found was as we have this surge in the market, Raquel works till, until 4 p.m. I need someone who comes on at 3, Raquel passes the baton. So I have one hour overlap and then she, that person, she or he works until six or seven. And that's just helping me return phone calls and texts and, and sort offers and make sure paperwork is organized and, and whatever else needs to be done. Right. So funny. I can hear a dog barking in your background yeah. when normally I know. they're always barking in mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm at the office and, what, and our uh, <laughs> transaction coordinator brought her new puppy in. So I this is real. It. Yeah, this is real time, baby. This, this, this is real. This is what you get. <laughs> this is what you get. But yeah. no, I think so that's anyway. a, I think that's a really good point. Is like start to make that list, and I think this 
you know, you had asked another question. It's like, well, what was the result of bringing my buyer's agent on? Yeah, right. <laughs> the dog's barking. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Uh, the result is I completely have absorbed her up. So, yeah. you know, I, I hired for this one need thinking, okay, I need, I need help on showings. Yeah. And, and uh, now she's, she's booked out for a, right. a new market that we've opened up. So it's, I'm right. in a very much, very much like Jeffy. I'm going to need that uh, additional assistance. And, sure. um, and so what I'm and, thinking on my end is mm -hmm. like you after hours showings mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, weekends, mm -hmm. but then also doing uh, telemarketing work to our, to my database for events yes. and reaching into my, um, my contacts that I haven't been in touch with, not my, you know, to use the Buffini world, my C's. I'm pretty, yeah. I'm very good about my A pluses and A's, but uh, I need help with some of my B's and C's. Gotcha. So, and be event driven and, on that. And one thing I, I want to throw in, because there's so many different schools of thought to hiring, and this is why you and I are just kind of laying this out on this podcast is because it, it, different things work for different agents. And the Keller Williams really has a, a protocol that they teach, and that is that as an agent, you hire your first assistant. And then when that assistant's, assistant's at capacity, you hire another assistant. And then they actually do a third assistant. So it could be two assistants and a runner. It could be two assistants and someone who's licensed who can do some showings or whatever. But they really believe that the tier should be the three people, the three assistants, and then you as an agent. And then when you max that out, then you hire your buyer's agent, a full-time buyer's agent then you do a second one, then you get a listing agent and then you know you grow your system. Now for me, Raquel does the job of two people and she's, is, she is incredible and she's uh, extremely organized and, and my clients love her. But I don't know if she needs another assistant. We probably need someone that's a crossover between a showing agent and a secondary assistant for PM and, and weekends. I don't know right. yet. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I have a feeling, I mean, I know for me, like Beth, my assistant, she's, she's very much like that too. She can, I mean, mm -hmm. she does so much work right. and she was able to set up my spreadsheet for these 25 offers so quickly. I was mm -hmm. kind of blown away to where I could then analyze them and then right. get to the final and dig into the de details on it. Sure. I think, I think part of the difference in this market is, there's such, you know, in the old days, I mean, I use this analogy that, you know, you used to go out on a bomber run where you'd, you'd spend the entire weekend day with them to look at eight properties and yeah. get lunch and talk and get to yeah. know each other. And now it's like, hey, one property there, you got a half an hour. We were lucky to get this time slot. Mm -hmm. Offers are due. Yeah. And, you know, I have like 15 people in that category right now on the buy side. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a very different need. They're, you know, they're not looking at, six houses each on the weekend they're looking at right. one maybe so you got to be able to go right and time is of the essence and if i'm at an open house or i'm showing a property myself and then the perfect property shows up for my client who's flown in from san francisco i need help i need to be able to have i need to duplicate myself so i definitely think we'll do a um follow-up to this particular podcast to go in a little bit deeper. And I think it's cool to say this worked, this didn't work. Um, but, you know, going back to you hiring your buyer's agent, do you think that if she had the experience that you had, that she would be able to handle more business or is she at capacity because of your market? Yeah. <clears throat> What's happening is she's pioneering a market that's a solid 40 minutes away from mm -hmm. where the majority of my business comes from mm -hmm. that I've been on the things I've been handing off. And we have an investor client that's absorbing all that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, his goal is to buy 17 homes by June 1st. Okay. So, okay. That's a lot of offers. That's a lot. Right. You know, and so she's got to, so that's taking up a lot of her time. Meanwhile, you know, I, I've got 15 buyers in the central market and she's, and she's just getting spread out. Right. So, you know, and it might be a little bit of that too. I mean, you, 
the longer you do this, you can handle more bandwidth, but she's mm-hmm. really, I can see it. She's maxed. Right. So we're going to need some help on the weekend. Plus I'm, you know, I'd like to take some vacations. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, we, Absolutely. we've got it. We have to, we have to have that working too. So sure. I, I think, so this is, this is the, going to be the fun part. I think for okay. our viewers is we're both going to do our indeed profiles. Mm hmm. Uh, there's, yeah. you know, there's probably 80% are going to be the same. And then there'll be a 20% difference. Cause I'm going to really right. want the, the, uh, database work for my events and yeah. you may have some other needs. And then we're going to develop these indeed, uh, hiring job descriptions and mm-hmm. see what we get. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I think that'll be pretty interesting uh, I think because, so too. you know, cause part of this is change management and, you know, a lot of people will think, oh, can you really find something like that? Yeah. I think you can. I think, I think you, you can. can too. I think you can too. And, and, you know, my business partner, Joe, God love that guy. He definitely keeps me on the straight and narrow because, you know, I, I interview somebody. I'm like, Oh my God, they're the best. I can't wait to have him. And he looks at me like, uh, no, <laughs> yeah, you need a voice of reason. So you do. And he's so good at picking people. He's amazing. I am not. So bleeding heart, you know, that person needs a job. Oh. But mm-hmm. okay. So at least I have a Joe. But if you don't have if you don't have a business partner, don't have a Joe, like I've got a Joe, um, definitely have your current assistant or your uh, somebody you trust in your office meet with you and this person once you get them to the final because they'll see things that you don't see if you're a me. <laughs> you know, right. you're probably a little bit better than I am at that, but. Well, no, you know, part, I would imagine a lot of our viewers and listeners are the same because like we've spent our career, whole careers in sales, right? So like yeah. I find myself selling them on the opportunity rather <laughs> than the other way around. And it's like, right. wait a second now. So, mm-hmm. And I can see the, you know, I can see the potential in everyone. So I have to yeah. be a little careful with that. Yeah. Um, the same. But. But, you know, people will show you who they are and you can, they you will. can, you, you can spell that out. Yeah. Um, Agreed. But I think it's going to be a fun project. I think it's a really valuable project for, for mm-hmm. folks to see where we go with this. Yeah. And, um, and I'm excited about it. So again, yeah, that's, that's too. surplus. Did, did you yep. have anything else on this, nope. uh, Jeff, just, before we go? Just, nope. Just wrapping this up. We talked about surplus. We talked about identifying the surplus and hiring for that surplus. And we will have a second podcast on how it goes. Absolutely. So uh, with that, thank you all for watching and listening. And again, this is Messy in the Middle, where we believe you can have a balanced life and a thriving business. See you all later. (laughs) Bye, guys. Bye-bye.